In this video, we're going to do some brief examples of finding missing lengths and angles in non-right angle triangles. To do this, we either use the cosine rule or the sine rule. So let's start off by finding now a missing length in a non-right angle triangle. If this was right angle, we would use our trig ratios or SOCARTER. The first scenario we're going to look at is where we have a known angle and two known sides. So let's say that this angle right here is going to be 80 degrees. We have what's called an enclosed angle. I'm going to say that this one is going to be seven and this one is going to be nine. So if we have an enclosed angle and two known sides and we want to find the third side, we would use the cosine rule. So what we have here is the cosine rule for a missing length and that length is going to be A. Now we can call this one B and this one C or the other way around, it really doesn't matter. All we need is this one to be A, let's say that this one is B and this one is C. The cosine rule for a missing length is given to be A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. And this is given in formula books. So what I'm going to have then is A will be equal to the square root. So if A squared is equal to all of this, A will be the square root of B squared, which is 7 squared plus now c squared, which is nine squared, minus two lots of b, which is two lots of seven, multiplied by nine, multiplied by the cosine of 80 degrees. So all we're going to do is put this through a calculator and find the missing length. So it's opposite the enclosed angle. So make sure your calculator is in degrees mode, shift mode three. We're going to now take the square root of seven squared, plus nine squared, and then we're going to subtract away from that now, two times by seven, times by now the cosine of 80, uh, sorry, multiplied by nine, two times seven times nine, multiplied by the cosine of 80 degrees. And with your brackets, it's entirely up to you on how you want to set them out. You could write it like so. We end up with 10.398, so I'm going to say that A is going to be equal to 10.4, and that now is to one decimal place. If you're doing this in an exam, write down your calculator display, and then round to a reasonable level of accuracy, or one that you're given. So 10.4, and that's to one decimal place. So this is finding a missing length, given now two known lengths and an enclosed angle. What we're now going to do is look at finding the value of a missing angle given three side lengths. And again, we use the cosine rule in this case. So let's say we wanted to find now the size of the angle here. We might have now on here, let's say that this one is going to be six. Let's say that this one is going to be seven. And let's say that this one is going to be eight. What we want to do is find the size of angle A. This is going to be A, this is going to be B, and this is going to be C. So what we have here are three known side lengths and we need to find a missing angle. Clearly I could find this missing angle or this missing angle. We can use the cosine rule in this particular form or we can rewrite it for a missing angle. You're not given this one in a formula book, but we could write now that cos A will be equal to B squared plus C squared minus a squared all over 2bc. All we've done is rearrange this. So if you want to sub it in here, you can do. Alternatively, we can put it in here. So what we can say then is cos a, in this particular case, is b squared, six squared, plus seven squared, minus eight squared, all over two lots of b, which is six, multiplied by c, which is seven. So I can now say that A is going to be equal to the inverse cosine. I want A, we don't want cos A, so we take the inverse cosine of both sides. So what we're going to have is 36 plus 49 minus 64, and then this is all going to be over 80. What's that gonna give me 84? So all I'm gonna do is plug this into the calculator and find the value. If you want, again, depending on the level of accuracy or the level of working you're meant to show, you could now just write this and take the inverse cosine. Do check with your exam board or teacher what is expected. So six squared, if you like, plus seven squared, then we've got minus eight squared, 
and we're going to now divide this by 2 times by 6 times by 7 and then we will just close off the bracket and that will give us the size of the angle. Do check for your in degrees mode. 75.5 so we can say that A is 75.5 degrees and that again is given to one decimal place. So does that look fairly realistic? Well this one here was 80, we saw 10.4, that looks pretty good. So that's now finding a missing angle given three known sides. Let's now look at finding a missing length and what we're going to do is use the sine rule. With the sine rule, let's just extend that, let's go there and something like that. With the sine rule, we can do this now, we're going to find a missing length. What I'm going to say is that this is going to be now the angle A and we're going to say that this is going to be 80 degrees. We're going to want to find this length right here. We'll be given this one here. Let's say that that's going to be 60 degrees and we will be given now one side length. Let's say that this is going to be 10. So when we have now these values, we have one known side length and two known angles, we can go ahead and find a missing side length. We can say using the sine rule, A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, and if we wanted, we could write now C over sine C. We will only ever use two of these. So if we consider what we have, we have A over sine of 80 degrees, is going to be equal now to B, which is 10, over the sine of 60 degrees. We want to solve for A, so we simply multiply both sides by sine of 80 degrees. So we have 10 sine 80 divided by sine 60, and we simply put that through the calculator. So if we do that, let's go ahead and do that one. We're going to have now 10 sine of 80 degrees and then we're going to have now sine of 60 degrees. So that now will give us on here 11.37, so I'm going to say that A is going to be 11.4, and that's going to be given to one decimal place. Again, the level of accuracy is not important for me in the video. That will be stated in the exam, or you make that decision. So we see here that we use the cosine rule when we had an enclosed angle and two known sides. I'm using the sine rule where we have one known side and we have two non-enclosed angles. So this now is the sine rule for missing lengths. So we've used the sine rule. If you need a full tutorial on this, do go to the link here as there's quite a lengthy one on there. Okay, let's now look at finding a missing angle using the sine rule. So in this particular case, what we're going to have, again, is a non-right angle triangle. Let's go ahead now, and let's say we wanted to find the angle right here. I'm going to say that this is going to be angle A. I'm going to have a length here, and let's say that this is going to be 9. I will be given some angle right here, and let's say that that angle is going to be 50 degrees, and we've got now the side length here of 7. So in this particular case, I've got two known side lengths, a known angle that's not enclosed. I want to find out a missing angle so I can use the sine rule. If you're ever unsure, it's easier to think now in terms of the cosine rule, that the cosine rule works for enclosed angles or three side lengths and anything else is going to be the sine rule. So I could write this now as A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, which is equal to C over sine C, or I could write that sine A over A is equal to sine B over B, which is equal to sine C over C. You don't need to. You can go ahead and rearrange this one. It's just slightly easier to do this. So what we can now say is that the sine of A over 9 will be equal now to the sine of 50 degrees over 7. So I can now write sine A is equal to 9 sine of 50 degrees over 7. And at this stage, if I wanted to work out a numeric value, I could do. Or I can just simply write that A will be equal to the inverse sine. So I'm taking the inverse sine of both sides, 9 sine 50 over 7. So straight for a calculator with this, check in that you're in degrees mode. 
shift sine, the inverse sine now of nine lots of the sine of 50 degrees, and then we're going to divide this by seven. So let's check we've got all of those values in there correctly, and this will now give us our answer. So we end up with 80.03. So I'm going to say that A is going to be 80.0 degrees, and that now is to one decimal place. Clearly, all of these examples I've just sketched up, so it might not look like 80 degrees. Again, it's not an accurate diagram. It's just giving us a sketch. So these are basic examples of using the sine and cosine rule to find missing lengths and angles in non-right angle triangles. It's better to think to yourself, have you got the cosine? The cosine rule is where we have these two known sides and the enclosed angle, or we have three known sides. If we don't, we use the sine rule, and that's where we have the non-enclosed angles. So, brief overview. If you need a full tutorial, there is one linked just here.